Hello everyone, I am Francesca, I am from London and I am uh, the founder of Fashion AI. Um, so first off, thank you so much um, all of the former speakers. Um, Julian, what you mentioned about how um, fashion and our preferences in fashion uh, shows our personality is so interesting and that's really how I came um, to the space. Uh, really during COVID-19, uh, looking at metaverse games and NFTs and realizing that in a world kind of post social media, where social media has all of our data in the metaverse, it has less data on us. So I saw music, sports and fashion as an extension of our identities of being able to understand who people are. And I really fell in love uh, with fashion. Being in the Web3 world, fashion is a very inclusive uh, part of the Web3 space. Um, so now let me present to you about Fashion AI. Okay, I'll share my screen. Okay, so we have a community of AI fashion enthusiasts, independent digital fashion designers, uh, graphic designers, people who, um, female gamers, and um, combined, combining all of our social media of LinkedIn and Discord, we're at um, 23,000 people. Um, so you can join us on Discord. That's really where we hold our AI fashion competitions. And LinkedIn is where we share a lot of um, industry information of what's happening. We do weekly events every Friday, which sometimes they're workshops teaching you how to use AI tools, sometimes they're in experts. Um, so I'm sure you could get a lot of value out of those. The main thing we do are AI design contests. Um, some of them have prizes, some of them are just for fun. Um, and the first ever one we did was based on this fashion show, which was Alexander McQueen. And Alexander McQueen was a real innovator. Let me just check that you can hear me, yes. Um, so Alexander McQueen, he had the first hologram um, of Kate Moss at a digital fashion show. He had girls coming out on stage with white dresses being spray, paint, spray painted by um, car paint machines. And this one, this fashion show really spoke to me because it was a real story. Um, and it was telling the story of Atlantis, which is a forgotten city under the sea. Um, and it was also telling the story of sustainability. What happens if uh, in future we do have climate change and the sea levels rise and humans have to adapt to living underwater. So as the get girls came out on stage, they evolved into fish and they had prosthetics and all of the fashion was inspired by um, the sort of, by the sea. So this is the first competition that we did. Um, we did one week, we had 105 um, submissions, lots of contestants. So you can go ahead and, and take a look at, at some of those incredible pieces of art. Uh, next uh, sort of prize we give out are the opportunity to be in various different magazines. Um, so we have our own fashion AI magazine called Faye. Um, and we've collaborated with Alain, her own magazine, um, with Fast Forward Toronto, um, amazing magazine there as well. Next thing we do is we also can take the AI designs and bring them into the physical world and turn them into physical garments. So here is a month long competition that we did with a Kolska. So we um, every week had a different sustainability theme and the prize was to turn it into an upcycled garment using recycled materials. And you can see we had 453 submissions. So a lot of activity there. Um, <laughs> Our new upcycling physical collections and on digital sketches generated by artificial intelligence. First was digital sketches from AI. Now we create physical twins. One, digital sketches with the eye by winner Irina Raiko. Step two, we bought used clothes in the second-hand shop and redesigned it. Step three, me and Paulina created the physical twins in the atelier in Milan. We put our heart and soul into creating this upcycling collection with attention to details and quality, recycling and supporting a circular economy with a step towards a greener future. 
Um, the next one is with uh, Digital Twin, um, and they they use uh, a company called Cornet, um, who um, can do um, prints on fabrics. Mm -hmm. um, so really kind of fast fashion from AI to physical fashion. Um, the next four eyes we do are augmented reality. So first we have to turn um, the concept. So this is an example of one competition, which was jewelry. So what we do next is we turn that into a 3D model and then we turn it into a low poly version of the 3D model to make it into an reality avatar for Snapchat. But there are lots of other um, augmented reality platforms out there, uh, such as Zero Ten, which is um, specifically focused on fashion. We did one bioluminescence. So the fun thing about digital fashion is you can really play around with materials uh, which don't exist yet, whether they're bioluminescent or they're made of crystal, uh, things that you really can't get in um, the physical world. Next form of prize is to turn into digital fashion. So this is um, a competition we did with Known Origin where we turned this garment into um, digital fashion and then minted it as an NFT on the Known Origin marketplace. And here is the fashion show. Um, and then the next one we have is a fantastical scene. So when I conceive these questions, it's not just about um, the fashion, but I think about a story. So I think about the environment, I think about the model, just like the Atlantis fashion show. So this concept is in a crystal cave. So imagine entering into a cave just full of crystals and all of the fashion is inspired by those different gemstones. And there are tons of gemstones of different colors and different uh, sort of um, translucent qualities. So I found this really, really fun to play around with. And what we're doing with this, is we're turning it into digital fashion, which as you can imagine is a challenge because Clove 3D doesn't have crystal materials. So we have to do a lot of R&D in terms of trying to recreate that with the cloth physics. And then creating the environment of the crystal cave and then the last part is turning it into an immersive showroom as well as a digital fashion show. So you can go into the showroom, you can find all the clothing, you can purchase the clothing. Um, and you know the next step would really be to turn this into an actual game, a fashion game. We also have an academy where, where we can teach you how to go from AI design to digital and physical fashion. I don't have a background in physical fashion, so I come from a tech first, AI first space, but I think it gives a very, very unique perspective on what fashion could look like in the future. Um, so we go through different tools like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, Leonardo Control Net, video tools like Runway and Kyber, uh, how to make 3D fashion, avatars, which are an important element of this, and the environments, which is the space. Um, and then the game engines are Unity and Unreal. Great. Um, so we also have a digital and physical fashion model. If you have digital fashion or physical fashion that 
was first conceived in AI. You can list it on our marketplace. We don't take any commission. It just links through to um, your page, but we are building out something where you will be able to pay in fiat or um, in um, crypto, and then you can search by color and you can kind of customize the fashion from within um, the marketplace itself using generative AI. So you can change the color or change the print. Um, some IP considerations, if you are thinking of monetizing your AI designs, uh, prints, are to look at different elements. So what jurisdiction are you in? Are you in the US or are you in the UK? There are different generative AI uh, regulations there. What tool are you using? You might be using Midjourney. Um, so you have to look at the terms and conditions um, of your subscription. Um, so you have different licenses. So every subscription will have a different license. The uh, more advanced commercial um, subscriptions will give you a commercial um, license to monetize your work. Um, but you still, with generative AI, will struggle to copyright and protect your, your work unless you can create derivative works. The next thing to look at is what prompts did you use? What words and images? You have to make sure that you didn't use um, a brand name, you didn't use um, an image of Monet, for example, where you will be uh, infringing on that IP. So you'll have to get a license to use that uh, and permissions. And the last part is what platform are you selling this on? Are you selling on Etsy or Amazon or using a print on demand service like Redbubble? With all of those services, you have to delve into the terms of use. They are updating them on a weekly basis. Um, with new terms and conditions for generative AI, and some are favorable and some are not favorable. Um, but again, on Fashion AI, we list the favorable marketplaces that you can use. Mm. And then the last part is moving away from just the creator economy to working with mm. um, game developers and fashion brands. Um, we see ourselves as the very much at the intersection between games and fashion. Um, so in order to facilitate this relationship, we're looking at brand licensing. So for game publishers, what that means is helping them identify properties that fit their budget and their audience. So who is playing their game and which brands would match their audience. Um, understanding IP rights and how to go through that whole brand licensing process and then developing um, proposals to the fashion brands. On the, for the fashion brands, they can, you know, upload their entire catalog of IP um, from uh, really recognizable pieces to their whole design collection to even potentially models if they, you know, have agreements with models that they work with or celebrities that they work with. Um, and this should complement their already existing licensing program. So a lot of fashion brands already license out their brands for say sunglasses or perfumes uh, all of the things that you'll see in duty free in the airport um, and with this platform they'll be able to receive proposal from games and then drive the commercial terms that are helpful for them whether it's a revenue share a minimum guarantee or royalty so that's it um, feel free to book a call with me i'd love to discuss any collaborations with the community